state of emergency business is questionable for a number of reasons. Whilst we've been forced to relinquish our basic human rights, government continues to violate the very principles on which this democracy was born. President Hage Gengop has placed the whole country under stage three lockdown, restricting our movements and slapping us with an 8 p.m. curfew. In my life, I never thought I would have an 8 p.m. curfew. I never imagined the day that I would not be free to go where I wanted. Never ever did I foresee that I would get a taste of what apartheid was like. And yet, here we are. The inadequacies within our systems are also rearing their ugly heads with the ruling against the Law Society of Namibia, which saw them fail in their attempt to scrutinize hashtag fishwatch accused lawyer and lawyer to the president, Sisa Namanje. Just to refresh your memoirs, here are some of the images we saw in the Al Jazeera documentary, Anatomy of a Bribe, which then changed our whole lives. I guess I've done this before, yeah? If you get through, no. We didn't really get this one. And the minister is okay with the arrangement? That's why the minister called me to stick to me. As long as it's the 200,000 can reach the minister. No, no, no. no. Once it's in society, I can't give any assurance that it's reached the minister. Johnny then visits the lawyer, Sisan Amanji, to confirm the money will make it to Minister Asal. The money that we want to give to the minister, we put it in the trust. You guys are careful to be speaking to people playing the Sisa warns us to be discreet. If you speak to a number of people out of that room, you will end up with them. Caesar's account may have been used to launder funds before. The documents indicate that a total of 1.2 million US dollars were deposited in Caesar's trust by the state-run company Fishcorp after James Hatukalipi became its chairman. I spoke to lawyer Eben de Klerk about this case. In terms of the, the application that Alice in brought, it was a fairly stock standard application. The court decided that there was basically insufficient mandate from the council to have applied for that case. And that is what the public now understands. So in my opinion, the bigger issue here lies actually outside of that application. I'm of the view that we are unfortunately all being blinded by some smoke and mirrors. The LSN made two mistakes, in my opinion. One, before this matter was even taken to court, the LSN got information from the FIC and ACC. The LSN should have there advised the ACC and the FIC that it has limited powers. It cannot be the vehicle to take these investigations further. It should not be required to get further information and further documents when the FIC, in terms of Section 1 of the Act, have got far, far greater and wider powers to obtain documents without any warrant, by the way. The constitutionality of that probably has, still has to be tested. But it doesn't make sense that LSN had to approach a court to get books of accounts while the FIC had those full powers, and, and likewise with the ACC. So I'm of the opinion that, that this case was dumped on, on the LSN, and I, and I think it was actually very calculatedly done so. The fact of the matter is that the law society's law comes from 95. Money laundering was never a crime. Corruption was not a crime by that time. Corruption only became a crime in 2005 and uh, money laundering only in 2007. So the LSN has got actually quite a limited scope of what it can do. It can literally only go and look at the books of accounts. So if person A pays uh, money to a lawyer with the instructions to pay person B and C um, and that instruction was executed 
The analysts, and even if it got full access to those accounts, would have been satisfied in terms of its mandate because the mandate was executed in the lawyer's books of accounts. If the monies were from ill-gotten gains, the analysts then would not be able to investigate that. That is the investigations that should be done by the FIC and the ACC. In that regard, I think the LSN should have, from day one, started educating the public to press ACC and FIC to execute their mandate and to take control of these matters if they have sufficient information. Why did they pass it on to the, to the law society? Why was it not passed on to, to the police? Why was that not executed? If you, if you suspect a lawyer committed a murder, you're not going to run to the law society because there's a lawyer involved. That would not be the right thing to do. The law society doesn't have the mandate. Similarly, if you as a police officer walk into a room and you see a body of a, a dead lady there, you're not going to just take pictures and say, oh, but wait, her husband is a lawyer, let's approach the law society, which is effectively what the FIC did in this case. The second mistake that the law society made, the moment it realized the majority of its counsels with uh, conflict of interest, and it was the right thing to do for those councils, by the way, to recuse themselves. You, you shouldn't be in a position where you make a decision while you're conflicted. Then the law society should not have continued on the basis of making decisions by a council which does not constitute a quorum. The right thing would have been for the law society, if it still wanted to pursue the case and what I've said now, I think it should have never done that, was for those councillors to resign, to step down, and a special meeting to be held for the membership to elect unconflicted members to ensure that all decisions by the law society remains valid decisions. You know, the, the question of what should the law society have done is a practical question. Unfortunately, legally, they did the wrong thing, and that is what the judge said. I don't have much of an issue with the judgment. I think the judge was not far off in law in, in terms of the decision not being properly taken at the law society. None of the councils even made uh, supplementary affidavits to that effect. but. I think there's a far, far bigger issue which the Namibian public should be aware of, and that is uh, the ACC and the FIC. We have seen uh, Commissioner Becker being moved under very suspicious circumstances. He's pivotal in the fish oil matter. Very shortly after that, we see a senior person from National Intelligence being appointed at the ACC. These matters, I believe, are all connected. And if we don't start to address those, and if we now look at whether the judgment was right and whether the law society should have do things differently, we, we might be falling for the smoke and mirrors that I feel was created very purposefully. Not into sports. That doesn't mean you don't like a good cheer. Or enjoy getting out your starting block. It's delicious. Thank you. Just because you don't like sports doesn't mean you can't appreciate goals. Keep going, keep going. A good pair of boots. The importance of a change more, a silky swing. Well, now it's a party. You can still revel in different kinds of defenders. Really? Tackers. Drivers. And the occasional swimmer. You can still make a good catch. Push yourself to the limit. Celebrate a good delivery and work your way up the leader. After all, you don't need to take to the field to get a good dose of entertainment. We've got everyone covered with the best movies, series, dockies and more. When it comes to DSTV, you always win. When does the magic start? It already started. What recourse we have as the citizens of this clearly now hopeless nation? I am, I am very concerned. You know, if we have institutional capture, those institutions that are supposed to protect us and bring justice to this matter will not do so. We have seen it in JIPF, where hundreds of millions got lost, got stolen. We know how it happened. We know who was involved. And nothing ever came from that. And there's a, there's a good reason for that. There's a very good reason for that. And, and, and unfortunately, it's institutional capture. Our institutions have, through political interference, appointed people who are not 
either taking the job seriously, but more likely actually take instructions on what to do. And, and if, if that's the case, and if that's not solved, I fear we will again not see justice done in this matter. A system that has been captured, you have very little recourse. What is important is for the public to turn their attention to the parties that are supposed to be accountable, to the parties who are supposed to execute a mandate to protect our democracy, to protect us from corrupt politicians. Um, and that is what the Namibian people need to, to understand and start demand that we that that gets improved. We have a few newspaper articles on the movement of Becker. We have a few newspaper articles on the appointment of a spy at ACC, and it stops there. N nothing ever gets happened. The, the corrupt politicians have become so brazen that they, they simply don't care. So, unfortunately, the power only lies in the hands of the people to, to understand and, and take a stance against this. We will have to, to demand accountability from our institutions. And we should not stop in doing that. We, we are in the hands of the media to just consistently pursue these issues. We really need to, to, to wake the Namibian people up to the reality out there. We talk around the bush and we, we say so many things that don't get to the actual point of what is wrong. And what is wrong is that we're currently in a state of state capture. And we need to identify that and we need to understand to what extent that has happened and we need to to demand that 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 the institutions be repaired we can't we can't hope that justice will prevail if you sit in a system that has been captured unfortunately one of the big fallouts of this is that the the, the reputation of the legal profession hasn't seen a dark hour like it's going through now and unfortunately by extension the, the, the trust in the judiciary is also starting to decline. You will note on social media that the public sees the legal profession and the judiciary very often as the same thing, and, and in many ways they are. So we are now experiencing and, and seeing more and more extremely dubious transactions going through legal practitioners' trust accounts. And uh, in, in the specific case, we now see for the first time in history uh, an extremely big fight against the regulator um, by a regulated person. Um, that in itself, without giving any judgment on guilt or not, that in itself taints a very bad picture of the legal profession. If you're part of a profession, you should not have a problem being regulated. Um, so that unfortunately does not help the legal profession that, that, that uh, this person went to s such extreme lengths to not disclose information. Uh, so that, that is unfortunate and I really hope that the Law Society transforms itself to, to, uh, to have more bite and to, uh, to be in a better position to protect the reputation of our profession and ultimately the rule of law. We have a legal practitioners, new legal practitioners bill that we've delivered to the Minister of Justice April last year already. And up till now, we have not been able to get a meeting on that. Um, some of the issues, such as the disciplinary committee, is a major issue. And the public think that the Law Society has got disciplinary powers. It doesn't. The, laws, the, disciplinary, powers, the disciplinary powers of the Law Society lies with um, of the profession lies with the disciplinary committee. And that committee falls under the Minister of Justice. So, to come back to the previous point, what would the Law Society, in any case, be able to do with the information that was provided by the ACC and FIC? So, we, sit, we, we really sit, apart from malafides from a lot of people in this, in this uh, whole saga, we sit with a system that is not serving our rule of law, the, the professionality of legal practitioners. So, I, I fully, I have a lot of sympathy for the public having lost a bit of faith in the legal profession and by extension the judiciary and I believe, I hope that this crisis brings us to a point where we we start changing things really urgently. So we've we've seen an increase in, in two, two things. Theft of trust funds, um, that's, that's really escalated and uh, the the good thing if you can say that is that if trust funds get stolen ultimately legal practitioners can't run away for too long 
And we have a fidelity fund, a fairly strong fidelity fund that can cover for those losses. Our biggest major concern that we currently have is, the, is legal practitioners facilitating money laundering and corruption. And that, unfortunately, does not get picked up unless that whole corrupt deal is being exposed because you don't have clients in the law firm going to complain to the law society. They are the beneficiaries of the proceeds. So, and we don't have enough in terms of the Law Societies Act, at least, we don't have the bite, we don't have the statutory powers to deal with those issues, and, and frankly, we shouldn't, because there's already an act that says money laundering will be investigated by the Financial Intelligence Center, and, and the evidence will be provided to law enforcement. That should happen. The same with the ACC. So those institutions need to comply with their mandate. The people of Namibia really deserve the protection that those institutions were supposed to offer and is currently not offering. Hello? Dude, United on fire. United? Rashford is unstoppable. DSTV, Eddie. You don't need that. We're watching football here. This is not the football. Do you know that I get more than 20 loud matches on any given week from the best leagues in the world? La Liga, Serie A, the Champions League, the Premier League. Oh, what about that? We have Premier League. That one, Premier League. No, we don't have that. Eddie, if you're going to spend your money, Spend it on the best football in the world. I'm talking Salah, Kane, Messi, Pogba, Griezmann, CR7. Oh, that's phenomenal! Dynamite! PK Thunderworks! Yeah, told you to get DSTV. Stay connected to DSTV to watch the world's best football. Share with us on hashtag learn on one. Tell us what you're learning and where you're learning it from. Send us your name and town to the One Africa TV's WhatsApp on 081-200-6659 or send an SMS to triple five. One Africa TV, it just gets better. Strange how government officials have kept their jobs and salaries whilst more and more Namibians have been forced into abject poverty. Kama in the name of saving lives. I mean, there are only two ways to this corona story. Either you get it and die, or you don't. But just in case you were thinking of protesting the suspension of our human rights in any way, the security forces decided to display their dominance in the city center recently. These are scenes shot by residents of Vintuk, of the police showing their prowess in intimidating citizens. Someone posted, last night our police were having a blast with the new curfew, but when there's a real emergency, they have no cars available. And another posted, the police needed the same energy when our women went missing. It crushes my soul to see the way the world has turned out. It is truly heartbreaking. And whilst we have our own pain and suffering to deal with in Namibia, we too must remember that the people of Zimbabwe have it way rougher than we do right now. And I hope that when they see us going through what they've been going through, they are able to provide a guiding light because, my dear, we are on our own. Just try looking up Zim or any of our own government's atrocities online, Shem. But then Zimbabweans' lives do matter as much as all of ours. Sapa, 
are doomed, Shem. Sadek has been silent on the atrocities happening within Sadek and even applauded Nangangwa for peace and stability. Jehovah, the EFF's Julius Malema had this to say. So, let us not be like all these Magogos and Madalas who are there in Parliament. We need to be proactive and propose legislation that is progressive and that is going to save our people. Comrades, we are here at Mama's grave to talk about the rights of our women, and she was the champion of that. But yet here next door in Zimbabwe, the rights of the people of Zimbabwe are being violated. Where's the rights of women? They abduct children from the streets, particularly girl children, rape them and kill them in the bush. The police and the soldiers have become law unto themselves. Mnangagwa has become a pig and is eating his own children in Zimbabwe. Mnangagwa is not different to Ramaphosa. When they came in, a lot of us had thought something positive will happen. Things have become extremely worse we need zimbabwe back we need zimbabwe back into the hands of the women of zimbabwe and the children of zimbabwe zimbabweans are not cowards zimbabweans have fought before why is the youth of zimbabwe fighting through hashtag why is the youth of zimbabwe fighting from south africa and london why are they not occupying the borders of Zimbabwe there in Musina will support them and say no car goes into Zimbabwe, no car comes out of Zimbabwe until the rights of our people are restored in Zimbabwe? Why is the youth of Zimbabwe not rising in Zimbabwe and face death because they are already dead? About Sadek and the AU, he had this to say. Sadek, there is no such a thing. AU, there is no such a thing. It's a group of old people who protect each other. They don't protect the interests of the, their people. It's a, it's a club. It's a gentleman club. They don't care. They don't call each other out. So they are, they are unable to say, you are wrong here, you are wrong there. Uh, and therefore, this is how we need uh, to fix it. And the way forward is that the youth must take politics serious. The youth must participate in politics. The youth must lead. Because most young people have left politics into the hands of old people who have nothing to do with us. AU has got a, a plan called 2063. <laughs> and, and those people won't be there in 2063. That's why they can say 2063. They won't take responsibility. So we, the youth, who must stop uh, suffering from political apathy and take the future into our own hands. They are trying to steal your joy. And I cannot stress enough just how important it is to keep your spirits high, your immunity on fleek, and to maintain positive vibes in these uncertain times. Get your strength up. You're going to need it. With that, it's a wrap. Stay woke with It's a Wrap by following us on our social media pages. It's a wrap name on Insta, it's a wrap name on YouTube, and it's a wrap with Erica Gebhardt on Facebook. Namibian artist Ease plays us out this week with his latest release, that video we were all asked to participate in. It's called Magic, and we could all use a little bit of that right now. Yes, yeah. 
From corner to corner, from coast to coast, from the bush to the grass. For an Africa, we still divide events. To all the people who never thought we're gonna make it, man. You know us. We forever wise. Man. 